Hello everyone, it's Carrie. In today's video, I'm working on a Spectre of Ondergeist doll and turning her into a Jack Skellington inspired tattered fairy. I'll be showing some of the costume construction and the face up. The hair on this doll is the typical tattered fairy's messy side bun, so if you're interested in seeing how I create that look, check out my Sa Sally Tattered Fairy video number two. I'll put an iCard or a link below. So starting out with the skirt, I've uh, done the, I did a typical corset with a little accent piece at the top of uh, Jack Skellington's tie. So I'm just kind of focusing on how I added the extra pieces to the skirt. So I had a number of different kinds of patterns that reminded me, or kind of reflected the overall look of the Tim Burton style and the style of Jack Skellington. Some of this is just like some fat quarters from uh, like Joanne Fabrics or Walmart where that with those little like waves or twists that you can see on there I thought that kind of mimicked a little bit of the Jack Skellington look and then I also had some strips of cotton fabric that I used some fabric paint to do some stripes on it and then I gathered those all together and then as you could see I was just doing my classic collecting a bunch of different kinds of laces and buttons and bits and I pulled those all together for some little collages on some strips of cotton and sewed those into the skirt. So for the face up I really wanted to stretch my uh, skills and do something very different on this one. I've done a Spectre Vondergeist face up several times and so for this one I wanted to do it very different than the others. I thought I would do some unique colors for the contouring and sort of make it appear that she had, uh, this sounds kind of gross, but make it appear that she had like a different color blood than red so that her flushing was, or, or blushing areas and her areas around her nose and chin were a different color than just a classic blushing. So you'll see me pull that together in a little bit. And honestly, when I was done, I was very nervous. I just felt like it was so different than what I was used to, and I didn't think anyone would like it. But um, always, as always with my nerves, I think it, it turns out, out to be some of my best work. And this one sold right away. So at the time of making this video, this doll is already sold, but the, the Snow White and the Princess Tiana will be listed for sale beginning Friday, January 12th. So they should be listed for sale prior to this video even being published. So if they are still available and you're interested, check out the link in my to my Etsy shop in the description box below. Or feel free to email me or reach out to me in social media to see if they're still available. I do have two more of this line that I'll be doing before I focus on my or my commissions and my work for the convention coming up so stay tuned for a couple more tattered fairies for this particular release I always find myself wanting to come back to them once my mind kind of generates some new ideas so I should expect to have some more later in the year as well So like usual, I'm going in with the, um, with a, I think it was a scarlet red or it was one of my Derwent watercolor reds and laid in a waterline. And now I'm sort of, I'm using this Prismacolor. I talked in the last video about how I'm using these brown and black Prismacolor watercolor pencils, which I had set aside. I didn't really like them when I initially used them, but I've really been enjoying them. They keep a pretty sharp point, especially the black so it's been working pretty well. So they're kind of like a softness in between Derwent. It's not as soft as Derwent, but not as hard as the Faber-Castell Aqua, Aqua Grip ones that are my favorite to do the fine lines. So here I am nervously applying the purple for the upper eyelid because um, at this point I'm almost committed to going with this color. I, I thought a purple would look good with the Tim Burton look. I think what I was nervous about more so than whether or not it would turn out okay is would it go with 
the look of the costume that I had just created. And I think it came together pretty good. So just doing some lighter shading around the nose. And I really want to keep the overall white of the face so and just so I'm trying to be very careful about how much product I'm applying and not covering like the cheeks and the, the rest of the face and really just sticking to those areas where I'm trying to contour and the creases in the nose and eyelids. But I did want to do something a little bit unique on the nose, kind of shape it up a little bit. So while I'm adding the shading, especially with adding such bold colors to a very stark white canvas, the colorless blender for by Pan Pastel really comes in handy in blending those that color out. And like I've said before, the links to the products I use are in the description box below. And as I'm saying this, I'm just realizing somebody asked me for a link of where they could find the colorless blender. I apologize, I don't even think I had a chance to respond to that. But I purchased my colorless blender in a pack of, uh, it came along in a pack of pan pastels that I purchased. I think it was the landscape pack. Um, but I, it's also available um, if you go to blick.com. That's a really good well-priced uh, online store for purchasing um, art products and I believe it should be available on Amazon as well. I'll do a search after this video and see if I can find it and pop it in the description box. But I'm sure they sell it on its own. Honestly, I think I've also been asked in the past a couple times if it's worth the price or worth purchasing a colorless blender. I, it may not work for everybody, but it really works well for me. Like I said, and especially in these areas where I'm trying to lay in a dark color on top of a light color, it really helps with that gradual blending. So I'm trying to do a dark lip and fading that in, so I'm just I started with the pan pastel black on the outlines and then I'm lining it with some Derwent watercolor black or I'm sorry that's I'm still using that Prismacolor <laughs> and then I'm using some white on the bottom lip to, to blend it in and then also adding a little bit of shimmer or the pearlescent pan pastel violet I think it's violet or lavender but it's the, I think it's the only purple that they have in the in the pearlescent. I'm blending that in the bottom lip as well. So making our lips look, I want them to be dark, but I also want them to have some sort of color and and variation to the shade, the the bottom lip and the top lip. I want you to be able to see. The, like texture and lines that I do but also keep it darker now I'm kind of smoking out the corners of the eye using this small flat brush and uh, some black pan pastel and carefully adding it to the bottom lid as well when I do the eyes it can easily get out of control if you pull that out too much you could end up just shading the whole side of the face so I went I erased it a little bit so I can maintain some control there So thank you guys so much for the comments and the 
advice on what kind of characters I should do for the horror convention. I'm excited to get started and I have some of those I already had on my list and some of them were new ideas. So thank you so much and you should see those coming out soon. Um, also, if you guys have any ideas of Tattered Fairies, what kind of characters would you like to see in this particular style that I do? I think someone on Instagram said that, or no, I think it was on my last video, um, somebody mentioned Miss Muffet or, um, what was the other one, Little Red Riding Hood, and those are just brilliant ideas, so those are kind of sitting in my mind for a while, and perhaps I'll try those out once I can have some, I have to kind of dwell on it for a while and think of different kinds of uh, ways to pull that together, so it's possible I may do that with my next release, thank you so much for those ideas. I think I've done so many Sally and Corpse Bride dolls that I just want to really expand to do something different. And so I had a lot of fun doing the Tiana and Snow White. point I was still kind of not sure how this was going to turn out and I just kind of pushed forward and kept going even though I was unsure about it and just not really sure that it would look right with even, especially with the costume I just wasn't sure if this particular look was going to go with that. Now at this point I would have coated her with about two or three more coats of Mr. Super Clear so that, that just kind of saving my work so now that I'm adding the eyebrows in I can erase and not worry too much about erasing the part underneath. But as you can see I guess I didn't spray it enough because it is erasing underneath but I, I was happy with how it looked anyway. must have only done like one or two coats of Mr. Super Clear because it did erase pretty easily. I'm trying to get the eyebrows the similar size and shape and angle. Just really kind of getting comfortable with this Prismacolor watercolor um, black pencil. Someone told me one time that the Prismacolor, um, I think it's red, or some of the Prismacolors, once you draw with them, they look one way, but then when you spray them with the sealer, they look a different color, and I could definitely see that happening, because that does do that with some of the other products that I've used. Um, but with the black and brown, I've been pretty safe with that. I think it was, they, they said that either the purple or the red, once you spray it with Mr. Super Clear, it turns into like a bright magenta. And if that's not what you're looking to do, it can really ruin your project. If that happened with me with the Derwent Water Soluble Metallics, um, using the purple, it went on a purple, but then when I sprayed it, it turned it into a bright, like, neon pink. And that, I think that might be with the 
this doll actually. <laughs> yeah, it actually is with this one that I did it. So the I signed her the, her on the back with it, and that's when I really noticed it. But I was trying to make her eyes like violet, and then but it turns out I, I it did add to it, and I liked how it turned out, but. I did use it around the lips as well and it made it pink and I didn't really like that so I had to tone it down a little bit so this may show that in a minute. But I'm using the silver because I wanted her eyes to be kind of gray. I apologize for this unusual focusing that the camera's doing here. I got a new camera and we're still trying to learn what it does <laughs> and here it just is like auto focusing. It's kind of awkward. But we've made some adjustments, so hopefully it won't do that in future videos. But anyway, so see, I'm adding in the purple there for the pupil. And so my intention, because it, it does look purple there, it may have a little bit of pink to it, but because it does look purple there that's what I was going for but then when I sprayed it it did pop out some really sharp hot pink So I'm just darkening in the outer edges a little bit. I added the lines that I like to do in there, but I also wanted to do a little bit more shading around the outer eye. And then as you can see, the, the pupils are, they do look purple. <laughs> and so I took that purple and went around the outer edges of the lips. And there I'm blending out the bottom lip with some white just to try to maintain that highlight. white pin pastel with some colorless blender to just pop out a little bit of a highlight and now I'm taking the these um, shimmer powders in pink and purple and just shimmering up around the eye sh eyeshadow and lips and even in the eye and the cheekbones just to give her some shimmer and color And then I took this pearlescent sheer um, shimmer powder and went over the rest of the face. Just giving her some lower lashes. Not sure if I show the what I've been talking about the how it turned that purple to pink so if you don't see it just um, just trust me that it happened and I actually went back and outlined the lips again after it happened because I just didn't like that pink coming out around the outline so here I'm just adding some highlight dots and she's just about done. Then I glossed up her lip or her eyes with some Liquitex high gloss varnish and gave her some eyelashes. And then of course adding a little bit of a 
nod to Jack Skellington. I'm giving her this big Jack Skellington smile to finish it off. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for all of your advice and comments and I'm taking everything into account and trying to get better for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.